Welcome back to Story Mode. It's 2009 and looking back the last two years, Mandy and I have been through a lot, but that's going to change and fast. Welcome to 2010, where we have another great selection of movies. Toy Story 3, Iron Man 2, one of my favourites, Hot Tub Time Machine. Is there some kind of retro thing going on this weekend? There's something going on in here. Dude is rocking cassette player. Leg warmers. I'm sure there's a good explanation for all this. Jerry Girl! Excuse me, miss. What colour is Michael Jackson? Black. And another comedy favourite of mine would be Adam Sandler's Grown Ups. I cannot tell you how many times I've watched these. That's it, no more video games, no more cell phones from now on. Stay outside and play. What are we supposed to do? You see a rope and a lake and that doesn't make you want to go nuts? Class is in session. Go over there. But for 2010, my favourite movie just has to go to Tron Legacy. It's 2009. I cannot believe we're nine years in to 2000 already. I'm watching a lot of Angry Video Game Nerd and some other YouTube channels. And my video game collection is sky high. Over 11,000 games. And that's just ones I could count. I wanted to apply for the Guinness Book of Records, but I just wasn't sure yet. In fact, I didn't even know how many games I had because I had a lot of video games in big boxes at my uncle's house. You see, when I was doing renovations, I didn't want dust to get on those games. And when I was buying them in big lots back in the late 90s, and then especially in the mid 2000s, all those Commodore 64 games from distributors, I just decided to leave them at my uncle's house until I had the house ready. I also wanted to test the games and play them. This way I could kind of justify a big collection as long as I'm still a good player. So one weekend, Mandy and I had a free weekend. Pioneer started to slow right down. I wasn't working weekends anymore and we had the weekend alone. So we decided to head into Melbourne CBD right in the center of Melbourne. We were walking around, having lunch, laughing. We finally had all that drama behind it and then Mandy just says it. I'm pregnant. Something wonderful has happened. Annie, I'm pregnant. This is a happy moment. The happiest moment of my life. Once I composed myself and go back into reality, I hugged Mandy, I kissed Mandy, and I just couldn't believe it. You know, this is the miracle we were waiting for. You know, we're going to have our own child, but we're not married yet. And that's something I kind of wanted to do, but whatever. We've got our own child on the way. And she's known for like a week and just didn't know how to tell me. It's about the future, isn't it? It's information Wait a minute. about the future. A few months went by and Mandy was going in for tests and just to make sure everything was okay. And the doctor says to us, uh, look, do you want to know if it's a boy or a girl? And Mandy looks at me and says, it's up to Joel. And I'm usually someone who wants to keep everything natural, but I just needed to know. You know, I'm very fussy with names and I wanted to kind of pick a name. And he said, it's a baby boy. And as you can imagine, I was, I mean, I wouldn't care if it was a girl or a boy, but it just, it, it, it was crazy. And then on the way home, Mandy and I were just talking about names and all different things. It was, it was incredible. So we get home and Mandy said, so I want you to pick the name because if we have another child, I'd like to pick that name. And I didn't really want to say the name I had in plan. But she said, no way, tell me. And without hesitation, Anakin. His name is going to be Anakin. Because, you know, I'm a Star Wars fanatic. I live, breathe and eat Star Wars. And it just 
is a unique name. What makes you think that? I saw your laser sword. Only Jedi's carry that kind of weapon. A couple of months went by and I still had the name Anakin in my mind and Mandy actually grew very fond of the name. She started to really warm up to it. So that morning after speaking about different names, I went to Pioneer and Pioneer started letting me know that we're going to go down to about one or two TVs a day. I mean, look, I was getting incredible money from Pioneer. Even one TV is enough for anyone to live off. But I was so used to that kind of big money and doing odd jobs at the end of the day for other companies was even starting to run low. And this is the time of the global financial crisis. Now, Australia never went through it compared to other parts of the world, but we were starting to see it in the 2009 period. And that's the time I was starting to get a little bit worried. So I started to move into creating cinemas. That's right, making home cinemas, cinemas within a home, not just a home cinema, but cinemas within a home. And it's incredible how much demand that had. So off I go. Now, a friend of Mandy's entered Mandy into the famous show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And she thought we've been down in our luck the last couple of years, and it'd be good for Mandy to go into the show because Mandy's quite smart. And I thought, yeah, why not? I mean, we probably won't get on, but you never know. And to our surprise, a few weeks later, they called us up and asked us to come in. Now, Mandy was on the show, I was in the audience, and, well, here it is. Hi. Go now, Mandy. That's some act to follow. No it doubt about it. It certainly is. Mandy, you're 35, you're an insurance sales coordinator. Can I just take our audience through this? You've had a hard run. In July 2008, oh, yeah. you thought you were having a stroke. You took yourself to hospital where you had tests. Things got worse. You were yep. paralysed down your left side. You were found to have multiple sclerosis. Correct. From there, you're involved in the Black Saturday bushfires in Victoria. Yep. With your mum, you're locked inside the house. 47 degrees, you thought it was all going to... Uh, all in for you there. Amazing circumstances. In recent times, you and your fiancé, Joel. G'day, Joel. How are you going, Eddie? Big cheerio to you, mate. Thanks. Have found out that you've finally conceived and you're going to have your first child. Thanks. Wonderful. <laughs> in March 2010, yep. Mandy, we wish you all the best of luck Thanks, with Eddie. everything, OK? Hey, Thank there's $100,000 to be won here. Five questions. You ready to go? Yep, let's Come on. get the ball rolling. Let's have a game, Andy, for $6,000. Let's log in, A for boxing. Boxing's in. Boxing is correct for $6,000. <laughs> B's locked in with four se five seconds left on the clock. B is correct for $10,000. Now, unfortunately, we didn't become millionaires. Mandy was knocked out after the third question. They start getting tough, and it was one she didn't know. Thank you, Mandy. Good luck with the baby, Thanks, and Eddie. let's hope everything just continues on the upward track for you. Appreciate it. Fantastic. Thank you very Good much. on you. Well played. Good stuff. Now we had a little one on the way. I knew I had to do some renovations on the house, and I'm not just talking minor renovations, I'm talking major renovations, like adding a whole room on. So I had to make a big dining room or a decent sized dining room off the kitchen. You see, we had a dining room and a lounge room, but that became a cinema. So the cinema was kind of a dedicated cinema and also a bit of a lounge room. Now we knew this was going to cost us money, but I was going to do everything myself. We only had to pay for materials and we didn't have much in the bank because we we're putting it all into the mortgage. And as fate would have it, Jess ended up buying Mandy's S15 Sylvia. What a stroke of luck. Good for us and great for Jess because the car was very well cared for and we got enough money to do the renovations. This would give us enough money for me to build the dining room and to extend the garage. It's something else I wanted to do. And maybe next year, I could put on another extension for a little games room, you never know. There were certain things I didn't know how to do when it came to building. And luckily I had my trusty good friend, Vic. Vic was the guy over the road. Now keep in mind, this house I'm in is my auntie's house. So I've known this guy since I was three years old. Because remember, I used to live in this house from the age of three to seven when my parents broke up and ironically, I live in the place now. 
Lastly, because I didn't have much work, I started to get into another industry. That is buy and sell cars. Buy them at wholesale prices or from wholesalers or even at auctions, fix them up and sell them. And believe it or not, it was incredible. So it's 2010, one night in March, my friend Alex comes over to play games with me like we do every Friday night. But this Friday night was a little bit different. This Friday night, Saber and Naomi, particular Saber, our dogs, were kind of very active and kind of getting, not excited, but just getting unsettled. And Mandy started to go into labor. Yep, into labor on that night. And <laughs> it's like the dogs knew. So Alex unfortunately had to go home early. Mandy and I raced to the hospital and this is it, Mandy's going into labor and little Anakin is going to be born any time now. So the midwife at the hospital and she rang up our obstetrician, the guy who's been taking care of Mandy through the whole pregnancy. He's the one that does the test and this guy's a massive Porsche fanatic. So he talked to Mandy usually when we went into appointments and then after they're finished talking, we talk about cars and we, we could go for as long as the original appointment was. Anyway, how fast do you think he got there? Like a bullet. That's why he drives Porsches to get to hospitals quick. I guess it's probably legal for him to do it when someone's going into labor. I'm not sure. He comes in the door and goes, I'm here. And believe it or not, it was perfect timing. Mandy's contractions were very, very close. And any time now, little Anakin's gonna be born. After an hour and a half, the baby was born. The obstetrician and the midwife looked at us and said, what's his name? Mandy and I looked at each other and almost the same time, I know it sounds hard to believe, we said at the same time, Luke. I don't know what happened, he just looked like a Luke. He just didn't look like an Anakin. And he was a good boy like Luke. Never. I'll never turn to the dark side. We're now parents. And the first couple of months, Mandy was home with Luke while I was working, installing cinemas. But things were not going so well, not as planned. It's not a steady income. You can be busy one week or one month, and then the next month have hardly any work. So Mandy wanted to give me the opportunity to be a stay-at-home dad and for me to look after Luke because her job was very well paying, very rewarding, and Mandy just felt like she needed to go back to work to finish off certain projects. And you know what? I took the chance. I pretty much raised my sisters with my mother. Um, they were a lot younger than me, and I wanted the opportunity again to do it now that I'm older and wiser. So the first day Mandy went back to work, I was there with Luke, and I would do everything with him. I would play with him, I would teach him words, I would teach him how to try and get on his stomach. You're not that you want to rush him to crawl, but just doing different things. And here I was with my own son, you know, the, in my own house. It was just so surreal. Uh, I cannot tell you, but the problem was when he fell asleep. After tidying up the house, I was bored out of my brain. I didn't know what to do. I would play games, but I just didn't feel like I was fulfilling my obligations. I needed to do something more, something hands-on. So I remember one day vacuuming up and I'd be tidying up my games, dusting the shelves, and then putting on a bit of Xbox 360 and saying, I have to do something with video games that's not going to cost me money, but it's something where I don't have to leave the house. So what could that be?